Welcome to my new video on the DC House steel case battery. This is my new DC House steel case 48 volt 100 amp hour battery. I've opened the box up. I've got the user manual. The monitor manual, the app manual, a small specification guide, and a sheet that says why choose a lithium battery with a sheet metal casing. Fireproof, anti-corrosion, better heat dissipation, and shockproof protects the interior. So we'll see how, what that's all about. I will be testing this battery similar to the way I tested the DC House 48 volt 50 amp hour battery. I'll be um, taking the lid off, inspecting the interior, fully charging it, load testing it, Testing the app, um, testing the monitor. I'm really interested in this monitor. It looks like it has a lot more new features. The monitor directly connects to the battery, as did the monitor on the 50 amp hour battery. So at this point, I'm going to start taking this out of the box, save all my manuals and my Sheets. There's the new monitor. I don't know. You can't really see much from that distance, but I'll be getting close up for it in a minute. The monitor cable, plenty of length. It plugs right into the back of the monitor and directly plugs into the battery. No additional sensors needed. The battery um, bolts for the cables and the little covers. Packaging, it's that thick foam stuff. It works really well. This battery is a hundred pounds, so it is quite heavy. Um, we'll see how it goes. Oh God. Yeah, it's heavy. All right, out of the box. And this is the battery. Cable end. It does have a, a handle built into it on each end. The monitor connects to this location. It has a battery on off switch, which is a new feature. And this is the vent. I guess that's what you would call it. Other than that, it looks like a, it's very solid and heavy. On this side, it does have all the battery specs on it. At this point, I'm going to take the top cover off so we can take a look inside. After using a Phillips screwdriver to remove all the little small screws for the cover, I can now remove the cover to see what's inside the battery. It's a lot different than the 50 amp hour battery. Um, you can see here that the all the interconnect cables for the cells. There's three wires that are eight gauge.
Everything's siliconed down into place as far as the connectors on the JBD controller. The JBD controller has three temperature sensors. One's built into it. One's for one side of the battery. One's for the other side of the battery. And these are the wires to the on-off switch. I'm interested in seeing if this switch has any other functions. This battery is very well assembled and uh, key components are siliconed down for rough duty service. I'm not going to tear everything apart to show you the insides, but I do have pictures. These pictures are from the factory during assembly. The cell internal structure with metal fixtures prevents any cell swelling during charging or use, increasing their service life by 30%. And the two cell packs are then bolted into the steel case. And this is the, the vent for the pressure won't build up and blow out the case. It'll just let the pressure out in the little vent holes here. There's not really much more I can show you inside here. Put the lid back on. Put all the screws on it. Then I'll start charging it and load testing it. This is the new battery monitor display. It has lots of new features. The red low battery warning light comes on at 51 volts and turns back off at 52.1 volts. The over voltage protection light comes on above 58.4 volts. The under voltage light comes on and the battery shuts off at 43.25 volts. The overcurrent protection is 280 amps for 30 seconds. The battery fault light will turn red if there's an internal problem with the BMS. The short circuit light turns on when the battery exceeds set limits. The over temperature protection. These are the settings that the over temperature and under temperature light comes on and resets. I was unable to get the Bluetooth status light to come on regardless of settings. Under normal conditions, this is what the display is going to look like. The display is designed to be viewed at an angle. This accommodates for most applications for the brightest viewing. As you can see, my battery is charging right now. I got a 10 amp charger on it and I've verified that it is charging at 9.8 amps so the meters correct and I've and I've checked it on the app the app is correct so right now I'm just go ahead and finish charging it I've now added a second charger Plugged into my test circuit board here, and I'm charging it 25 amps. So, and I got 32% charge, so it won't take too long to charge this thing up at that. I'll be back shortly. With the battery fully charged, it rested overnight. The Resting voltage was 53.6 volts. I now have my inverter hooked up to it. And I've got it loaded down to 51 amps. And I'm going to drain the battery now. This is the manual override switch. It directly goes to the BMS. It will override the Bluetooth app is trying to do. It's very simple. When the switch is off, the discharge is turned off. The BMS is not turned off. It only turns off discharging. The Bluetooth app will still work and charging will still work. 
when the switch is on, everything works as normal and it, the battery can be discharged. Install the DC House app on your phone. Click on the icon. Click on your battery. This is the home page. It shows the basic information. Data shows you the total voltage, total current, total power, state of charge. The battery is in standby use. Now with the charger running, you can see the total current of the charger, the total watts, the state of charge of the battery. It also shows how many cells are in the battery, which are 16. You click on the single cell voltage. You can see that all the single cells are within one hundredth of a volt of each other while charging. This is normal notification if the battery is shut off for any reason like high temperature low temperature overcharge i mean overcharge discharge all of those one of the warnings will show up in this notification area you really don't need this especially if you have the display because the display shows all of those notifications now which is a great feature on the display and that's basically it for the Bluetooth app. I recommend getting the DC House 18 amp charger for rapid trouble free charging. Okay, after thoroughly testing the battery, I ran it through two charge cycles. It cut off at 43.2 volts, I believe it was. I measured the amp hours on both tests and they came out to about 107 amp hours total for the battery. The testing went very well with the battery. I'm very impressed with the new case design and the rigidity of how the cells are mounted. I believe this will be a very excellent choice for rough service usage such as in lawnmowers and golf carts. The, back, the cells will be very secure in there and not wiggle around so it should extend the lifetime as they say by about 30%. I'm going to be installing this battery in my ZT480EX mower and in the next video and have the results of how it performed. Thanks for watching my video.